Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Pen and Pen. Sanbonani bo mama, sanbonani bo baba, sanbonani bo sisi bo poti. Welcome back to Pen and Pen. Chilling here with Penuel, the Black Pen, Bambiza Ngokot, Bamazio, and me, Upenzin Mlojwa. Welcome back, brother. What's up, homie? How are you? <laughs> I'm good, bro. How are you? Katele, man. Why are you tired? I, I woke up early yesterday, had a long day, and I woke up early today. And I anticipate a long day, and I've already had my gym session. So, like, and Angagas, like, my last meal was probably yesterday at like six. What's a long day? Long day, what do you mean? Mm. Oh, well, we all have 24 hours. So, what's oh, a long day okay. for you? So, woke up at about half five mm. yesterday. Woke up at half five, uh, went to gym in the mm. morning. From there, I went to coach my rugby boys. I refed, went with you to the rugby. It was just a. a how did your boys do? Day. They won. won. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Congrats. Shout out to the Boom. mighty thirds. Come on, Saints, let's go, boys. Third team you know, Saints Stadiums. The third team Saints Stadiums won. Second team Saints Stadiums won. First team Saints Stadiums won. So Congrats to Saints. Who uh, are you guys playing? Northcliffe. Jeez. Um, Sorry to Northcliffe. Yeah. And we played we played Jeppy on Wednesday. Okay. But we played our third team played their fifth team. You know, so it was a bit of a Imbalance. Your third team played their fifth. Their fifth team. Oh, because JP is a strong Stronger, rugby yeah, club. You know, rugby but school. again, we gave them 50 points. You know, so we dominated. So they maybe should have given you the fourth team or their thirds, the, they, arguably. They, they, their thirds were going to be a bit stronger than us. Mm. But if they gave us their fourths, maybe. We're gonna give, no, we're going to give them another 20. Jeez. Easy. No, my okay. boys are fire. Oh, Congrats. Oh, Look, oh, I want to oh, say um, for no, people that don't exam. follow schoolboy rugby, schoolboy rugby is like a cult space. Yeah. In this country, um, Northcliffe is on the rise. They're doing really well. Shout out Northcliffe. There's a lot of other schools that are on the come up as well. Um, shout out to St. Stithians. We went to watch St. John's College yesterday with Kes, yeah. King Edward School. Kids, yeah. King Edward School beat them in the first team. Uh, we watched JP Boys and Uffies. Ooh. JP Boys, amazing, amazing backline. Yeah, what a game. Unfortunately, a they, game. they went down to Uffies in the last minute or the last two minutes. Second of the game. Uff- yeah. Really, really good game. So, yeah. Anyways, let me greet the people. Um, see, I don't know. Do I speak to my camera? Thank you. Uh, what's up, guys? I hope you're good. It's Penuel, the Black Pen. Of course, it's Pen and Pen. Uh, we want to thank all of you guys for for watching our last video. I have to say, mm. I don't, I don't, I don't understand YouTube. Or I haven't researched YouTube as well as I should, so I'm not sure if that episode was slightly shadow banned because it picked up, it flagged on YouTube as having content that speaks about self harm and suicide. So as soon as we uploaded the video. An email came through saying, look, if you if you or you know someone who's suicidal, this is a helpline. Please reach out. Like, quite caring. But when you click on the video, it puts up this, I think it's a prompt, that this content might contain stuff about self-harm and suicide. And then you have to confirm. So I can only imagine that YouTube is probably not sharing it to everyone, in particular, like children, etc. So there's a chance that the episode was slightly shadow banned. Mm. But for all of you that watched it, we appreciate you very much. For everyone who shared their thoughts, we appreciate you very much. We know, as we said on the episode, that it's a very important conversation and it's one we're going to keep having uh, moving forward. But we love you guys. We appreciate the support. Someone gave us, like, money. Maybe I should just give mm. them a shout-out. I, no, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can say this because it's not... Uh, it's not private. It's not like a DM. Mm. Um, the person's name is Q. I think it's a lady. I see the profile picture is a lady. Thank you. Um, thanks. Great episode, brothers. Please sing Boys to Men. <laughs> I do. Yeah, something small. Love you loads. <laughs> and then what's pride, bang? 105 rand. So we're going to have to go and rehearse with this bugger. It's coming. It's need some a capella. <laughs> baby. Kwanja, what's I do? I'm telling the world right here and now that I'm gonna love you and love you. XAQ, we're coming. Don't worry, we'll, we'll go rehearse and we'll clap a little something. Um, I don't know if you'd like to. Maybe how are you doing before before we? How are you doing? I'm I'm monitoring the time, so I have to apologize to you guys. We're gonna shoot for an hour. We do this because we value your time. Yeah. Um, and we don't want you to get tired of our content, and we also wanna manage. I know you guys sometimes are like, no, keep it going. Keep Four going. hours, keep but going we have free. to respect time. We're going to do like comments for about five minutes or so. Uh, I'm going to let Penson maybe read some of them. Sure. And then I'll answer your question on how I'm doing, if you don't mind. So we jump into comments and you... Yeah, we'll do doing. like five minutes. Five minutes so, of comments. So these are the comments that... Um, that people dropped on the, ah. the, the male depression 
I actually ended up changing the caption because I was saying the struggles, I think it was like this male depression or something like that. And then I made it the struggles of men's mental health, uh, etc. Because I'm hoping the algorithms on YouTube are going to be a bit kinder and it's more palatable for people to consume. Shout mm. out to Sia Notumi, the guys on production today Shout at Amped in Newtown. A lot of them is just comments. I know like Kusti Punkos is saying we need more conversations like these from the lens of black South African men. Um, Urban Skotani says... I once got burned by somebody. Scotin. Scotin. I'm not saying guys, sorry. Um, I think we're looking for the questions, rather. No? Well, I'm just reading. Oh, you didn't read the thingies. But anyways, more than anything, people were just saying thank you very much for the conversation. Yeah, there's a lot of just beautiful uh, comments around. This is a therapy Kukbonga. session. Siabongam Tembu. Uh, Ma Paladi. Paladi. It's high time we accept that humans are fragile, men and women alike, and mm. they go into detail. I saw, I saw Homoto also commenting around just being grateful for having a platform where we can have these conversations. Yeah. Uh, but just shine a paragraph. Print a paragraph. Some people so. got to vent, man. And yeah. some people got to share their stories and we appreciate you being vulnerable. Yeah. Um, I think one of the conversations my brother and I have to have, maybe with mm. the production guys here, is maybe hosting a session. Yeah. Uh, maybe at Amped or somewhere else where people can come through. We can... Uh, introduce the topic it could be male depression mm. and we invite women especially women to come and listen to the struggles of men yeah. because they have boyfriends they have sons they have fathers they have brothers and then we'll introduce the topic and then maybe take questions from from the audience and let and people engage. share their bits and yeah. ask questions that'll actually be really cool i think that would be pretty dope yeah um nirvana unicorn great convo nirvana is a member on the channel thank you so much uh timbale to bride pen and pen thanks brothers um utabang khabung or Chabang. I like the distinction Penson makes between married and single guys. Mm. Uh, it's one of the, the one of the main reasons I've decided to remain single and kidless or childless Lisa. for now. That becomes a conversation. Yeah, that itself. becomes a conversation because, hey, guys, no, no, it's not good for men to be alone. But at the so same wait. time, it's not good for you to get um, into a relationship where you lose yourself. And you, and you end up under pressure, yeah, which was yeah, your main thing. Yeah. Abi so wait, the boy. Shout out to DJ Spoo. Thank you very much indeed for taking care of Mr. Penny well. Like I always representing Spuda. It was late. Jobe says it is Pomotico. It was late. Lu Spuda. Always representing. Um, Mziga Palo. Mziga Palo. Oaks, please don't stop using the kind of language that might be deemed vulgar. Because <laughs> sometimes we get criticized. I've, I've heard a lot of people say, I watch this with my wife. I watch this with my kids. I want my children to watch this. And, and the bad language is a bit. We were raised on hip hop. That's why we swear and whatever. But. We are not so arrogant that we don't consider people yeah. and, and their sensitivities. And he was suggesting that we potentially put like an 18... Put an 18 sign, sign and be as comfortable know. as possible with your yeah. speech. Then probably uh, leave the clean speech when you've got Khrut <laughs> Manusbu around. <laughs> I don't know if you want to read some, some more of these. We've still got a bit of time. But there's, thank you very much. We consider these things. It's, it's not that we'll stop just because you asked. You must understand that when we make content, as much as we do it for ourselves... We also consider that there are so many kids out there who enjoy, who appreciate this type of talk, which is raw, unfiltered, speaks to them. Mm. Now when we start being brand friendly and, oh, good evening, and, oh, we can't say that. Oh, he said the F word. Yeah. Some of the people are going to be like, nah, that's bullshit. Yeah. That's not how we fucking speak. So we apologize if you guys are sensitive to it. We, we do consider, we do try and find better, easier ways to work around that. Um, but we're not going to lose well, hey. ourselves. Yeah, yeah. We, we have to be authentic because uh, when you bump into me at Pick and Pay, you know, the, the guy that you meet here, you know, is going to be the same guy that you meet at Pick and Pay. So yeah. it's that. Uh, Uta Patrick Nkosi, I think you struck a chord there, Penson. A stroke. Uh, stroke. stroke. <laughs> um, I think in retrospect, it's best for that uh, intoxicated should be away from the family until he or she gets things better. So the guy who is in a toxic space, I think that's what he's trying to explain. Mm. Would you as a broken man um, rather stay away if you being there is worse off? I mean, that's what we spoke about, mm. you know, so it becomes those type of things. But there's a comment that we spoke... That, go, that, go into that the chamber like, like Goku. Go work on yourself. Yeah. Uti, this is Colbert. The caption itself is deep. Shout out Colbert. Colbert, uh, we love you, bro. Uh, you know, Colbert is on ah, Twitter. Love. Yes, <laughs> At this is Colbert is on Twitter. Please go check him out. Uh, he does 
the Lord's work on Twitter in terms of sharing our content and the content of so many other podcasts, especially unknown ones. He goes out, his own opinion, his own taste. Yeah. He finds clips that speak to him that he likes. Yeah. And then he shares them. And what happens is it drives traffic to some of our content. So, Colbert, I don't agree with all the clips you share. Do you know this? You've shared certain clips that have made people attack me. I understand. But this is not me asking you to change. Carry on sharing whatever you feel. Mm. I appreciate that you share the link. And we appreciate that you drive traffic Thanks so to much, some brother. of our content. Yeah, so Supreme Clientel says there are so many causes for depression, uh, but one of the ones that were highlighted by an author, I can't remember if it was Robert Greene or Peterson, is incongruence between the outer self and the inner self. So it becomes that, you know, who you think you are versus what is out there uh, or what you present in the world. A lot of us struggle with that because in our mind we see this, but in reality we are that. So that friction, you know, and you spoke about that cognitive dissonance. I saw or we lived through a generation where um, think of the post-apartheid with a lot of the racists that grew up in a apartheid era. Those racists, not white people, racists, who now have to deal with the fact that in their mind, seeing a black person is either a tikel or garden boy. And that's how they refer to it, you know, as the Macy or the Sian. And all of a sudden, that T-girl is now a CEO of a company, that T-boy is now a CEO of a company, and you grew up for 50 years in a racial system where black people were nothing but below you, next thing you need to now bow down because your boss is that exact same person. So there's that dissonance of Wuti, what you think inside versus the reality. Sure. You know. Um, Are you done? Actually, we don't have time. So, yeah. Guys, thank you again for all your comments. I'm not going to read them. Lesicha, Mama Bolo, uh, Michael, or Michael, uh, Donatella, uh, Unati GX was a member on the channel. Thank you so much. Shut Porsche, up. Ramabulana. Guys, we read all your comments and we appreciate them. And maybe when we get a chance in time, we'll, we'll handpick some of the comments that we want to read out because they're educational. We'll handpick some of them that we want to respond to. Um, for everyone else, please read the comments. We make content, but sometimes the juice, sometimes the, the real juice yeah. is in the comments. This one uh, is from Kate, um, and it's going to lead into the conversation for sure. today. Sure. Kate says, another conversation I'd like to understand within black men is why black fathers are, in inverted commas, better fathers to children that are not theirs than their own children. I think we'll shut it down there. Thank you so much for the comments. Mm. And yeah, Kate, uh, I think we can start the conversation because today we're speaking about fatherhood, considering yeah. that we share a dad, considering that we are fathers. Pinson's a father to three, I'm a father to six. Your thoughts on what Kate was asking? Yo, I, I read that, I got I got emotional, I got I got goosebumps, I, I got angry. Yo, I got so, so angry because it just, and this is not a shot at Kate, but it, she might be speaking to a segment of the female population who are mothers that are talking about these things. And to those that actually feel that way, it's just, it's it's clear to me, Guti, they're oblivious about the black father struggle. Okay. Like for, for, for the biological father who is not seeing their, their, their kids. They're mm. just absolutely oblivious, Guti, how we feel, what we go through, our pain, our triggers, our fights, our struggle. Like for, for you to say that, mm. just, it, it speaks volumes and that's why I got so emotional so I'm going to jump into it speaking about fatherhood speaking about that comment oh sorry I didn't answer I'm I'm great mm. very blessed I think I'm having an amazing two years mm. um, my favorite commodity on the planet is human beings mm. not gold not platinum not cryptocurrencies um, I love human beings and I'm in a space in my life where I get to share my thoughts my voice I get to counsel people online and I meet some of the dopest people in real life. Mm. Some of you guys have met me and I think we vibe and the love that you give me and the love I try to give back is everything to me. So I'm in a good space, been enjoying watching Schoolboy Rugby again, mm. refinding my welcome love for back, rugby. Welcome back. Yeah. Um, my kids are great. They're growing. Um, I'm making a little bit of money, which is pretty dope. I'm meeting amazing people besides the people that follow the content. I'm meeting amazing people that are doing amazing things, mm. creating jobs, making money for the country, trying to solve problems, etc. So I'm in a good space. I struggle, though, with fatherhood. Mm. I struggle with uh, personal romantic relationships. Those are my two biggest struggles. But 
those are first world issues. I'm not struggling with food. Yeah. If anything, we have like the opposite issue of food. We have mm. too much, food too much food. Where we end up we having end up to fast, fast. Yeah, yeah. You I was about to say, yeah. Like yeah, we yeah, fall, yeah. like oh, so much food. Not eating for oh, the next two days. I'm intermittent fasting because yeah. I have too much food and it's yeah. too delicious. Um, so I don't have food issues. What fell out of your mouth? Sorry, it might have been a spittle. My apologies. I think not it was the a No, guys. So this guy. Don't gave mention me the brand because they didn't give us money. Have a fun, Nemo Fizzle. Oh, fizzle, fizzle. This guy gave me four sweets and he took the lion's share. Bear in mind, the good team, I came with the sweets. These are my sweets. <laughs> and he only took, gave me four, and the rest is charm. So, guys, please, sorry. He's lying. At least now you guys know what you're dealing with. I bought sweets here and I fucking shared them with this clown. Look at him now. Dag. I'm Caesar. Next thing. Booga. Bastard. Anyways. Um, you threw me off, man. Fatherhood. Oh, I don't struggle with third world problems. Shelter. So many friends. I can sleep over with people's friends. We have properties. Yeah. Uh, we have vehicles. So Trying we have to sell I, those properties. I, I have first world guys, problems. Guys, if you guys are looking for a flat, hit me up. I'm trying to sell my flat. So please. Why are you trying to sell no, your No, because I don't want to manage people. I'm tired of managing pop human beings. So and there isn't something weird about the flats. It's falling apart. No, or? it's an amazing flat. an amazing place. It's uh, student central. You can walk to UJ. Um, amazing, amazing. So hit me up. We, 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 we sell properties. And your only issue is managing human beings. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't have the capacity. You spoke okay. about your, your struggles being around relationships and... And fatherhood. And fatherhood. Yeah. My struggle is relationship and finance you know okay um so i just need to manage certain things you know so otherwise i'm good it's just fatherhood and relationships and even yeah. then it's not deep it's yeah. just i wish things were better easier easier smoother and i think yeah some of the issues i have are ordinary struggles uh for normal gents out there otherwise i'm i'm great i'm happy i'm I, healthy I, I, I always read people's comments about you and your kids and the moms on twitter as if they know like, people will say the most horrific, most painful thing mm. as if they in the room. Yeah. Like, it's one thing if, and I'm not condoning this, but it's one thing if it was the bitter, angry mom who's writing all these things on Twitter. And projecting. And No, I'm saying, Wuti, like, if oh, it was the moms. The mother the, of my the child. mothers of the kids. Okay. If they were the ones that were angry and bitter and what, and they were the ones that are talking about yeah. this, they're not doing any of that shit. Sure. It's unknown fuckers who are just... Uh, 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 uh. Projecting, it's like the comments about all future nine nine or Nick Cannon. Mm. Let's hear the moms. The moms are, yeah. Where na, where na sissy who can't hold a relationship for fucking two weeks? Jeez. Or such as this was an ejaculation. Why? Why? We tend that way. We tend that. Susa la na la. You've got a child. Cloud cloud Nick Cannon. Cloud cloud future. Hi bo sissy. Focus on you. Get yourself a good man, get married, have two and a half kids, picket fence, live your life, jungle my wife and kids. We are going to be able to As long as Bona, Bona be grand. Sure, who am I to step in? But I got so emotional reading this comment, man. Sorry to I've, I've got the answer for Kate. I'm, I'm going to answer Kate and then I'm going to try and simplify the concept of fatherhood from my perspective. Yeah. Um, I think the question that Kate raises is very fair. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing it's based on her experience and the stories that she's heard. She emphasizes black fathers. It might actually apply to other races as, as well, mm. Kate, if you were to ever to find out. Why does it seem like black fathers are better to other people's children than their own? A lot of it generally, where it is true, is normally because the, the father may not have access yes, to their child. Gatekeepers. Um, and you may find they have access to other people's children. It could be his girlfriend, his wife brought in a child and this girlfriend, wife, are like, you have access to this child. So he gets to pour his love and his resources into that child, mm. either than his. It could be a situation there, how you guys felt pregnant. Maybe he wasn't ready to be a father and you forced to have the child. And he was like, I'm not ready. So you're forcing a child onto him. Whereas this one is like, look, if you want or not. There's that situation where he's, he's choosing, which mm, we could debate options, yeah. whether it's right or wrong. Um, there's situations where it's just the relationship between the two of you, you know, the, the amount of times you swear at him, the amount of times uh, your family has sworn at him, it's been hostile. 
mm. his relationship with his child with you versus here you might find with this woman it could be a neighbor's woman it could be his sister's child that's not his child but it's his sister's child his nephew niece the 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 relationship that he has with that woman and her family is so conducive and welcoming mm. he has like he has no choice but to be friendly to the child mm. and then sometimes what could happen depending on the child's age we have different relationships with different children mm. i have six children and my relationships with my kids are different in particular my relationship with my two daughters is softer than with my sons so if my sons ever come and say yeah but you're nicer to the girls i can explain now imagine if my daughter is from another mother and then my son is from another woman let's imagine i have a wife who brought in a step daughter not my child she's a girl and then i've got a biological son i'm rough on this guy i'm i make him to push ups i send him out in the dark i'm trying to strengthen him and then i treat this one like a little princess and then the mother says but you're treating that child better than mine and it could be this is a boy mm. you know it could be the gender it could be certain people like certain kids more certain people vibe with certain kids more yeah. it, it might not even be me it might be that you feel i don't like our child mm. but every time our child is around me they moody i want my stepfather i want mommy they always crying so i'm like this kid is actually annoying mm. this other child that's not mine we vibe hey king pen how are you are you okay do you want some of my sweetie and you end up being friendlier there are many reasons that things like that happen um Can and I tell you what it's, my it's not is. always that the guy is just a horrible person to his kids and he's trying to impress this woman and their child and he which hates you and case. your child which could which, be the, which case. Could be the yeah. case so yeah that's the answer from me yeah. to to kate there may be others and and people are welcome mean, to share mean, my my main thinking this is just my opinion is is the excess you know so whenever there's a child in the mix you know um chances are even if you go to the legal route chances are or the the most of the time the child stays with the mom mm -hmm. you know so that means the mom is the gatekeeper so if the mom decides to move to cape town mm. and i stay in joburg you know already my access to the child has become limited highly limited yeah but highly limited so now all of a sudden she gets a new boyfriend yeah lapo i'm an i'm an involved father yeah i video call my child i i send money yeah. i try and but that guy he's also an amazing guy yeah we're not talking about he's she's dating a loser she's also dating an another amazing sure. guy who has now uh because they're in a serious relationship they've moved in together sure understand she legally has access i get my papa nyana four days a month mm. she gets the rest 28 days whatever the case may be in gani hlala lap with mm. an amazing guy who's invested in that family yeah. you know so he's there for rugby games he's there for choir recitals he's there helping homework uh, i can't when help that when she's sick when he's sick I, and the I, child wants to come home and tell them a, a story about school yeah one that guy's there i i can't always be there cuz i'm in job working they've decided to move to cape town so already e access is a huge huge thing yeah. even if we both stay in joburg and we decide to co-parent but let's say she's bitter yeah one mm -hmm. and already there the access is different mm -hmm. yeah one so i think the main reason why it seems better is just access to the child because the child most of the time stays with mom mm -hmm. you know so every go so there's many guys roaming around who look single here but they dads and they just don't have access to inganzabo yeah. as much as they would like to have and then they'll see and then this guy who's stepping in as a stepdad seems like ukrain sure. you know no thank you for the question kate yeah. um, please keep them coming and again if we get a chance to do like a group setting that would be awesome people can then share some of their thoughts maybe disagree with us maybe come in with a different angle and that's fine yeah. Fatherhood uh <laughs> one more sweet. Fatherhood in the way we've been raised has been sculpted by the mainstream media. Yeah. Realistically, we have to be honest. Today our concept of fatherhood is based on the perfect white American European father who m marries the mom, comes home every day with his little briefcase and his tie. His kids run up to him, "Hi dad, hi kids," you know. and they teach their children how to ride the bicycle they take them out for ice cream they are there at every sports game at every piano recital they pay for their kids lives um all the way to tertiary etc that that's how it's been sculpted when you move a bit back from an african perspective and how our fathers used to live most of us as black people don't really know what i mean by that is we almost have the same idea of the african father was there but the expectations were different because the african father and the african mother had a different type of union it wasn't oh, i'm marrying you hey wife hey husband the men would would almost dominate and be the king of the household and he would have 
maybe more than one wife in a polygamous, polygynous setting. And then from there, he focuses on certain things in the household. Obviously, security, some type of provision, having livestock, etc. He would not be fully hands-on with the raising of the kids. The, the African narrative of it, it takes a child, it takes a village to raise a child was because it would be your woman and your child, and then she would have maybe have a sister wife, or maybe there would be other women, including maybe your mom, on, on the land, and they would raise the kids as women together. Basically, what we have today is you send a child to a school, and then the school generally has females that are raising the kids. But we'd have it in a home setting where I'm a husband, but I'm not waking up in the morning making porridge for the kids. The women would make the porridge. And then the kids, as they're young, would spend time with the women. And as the boys get to a certain age, they get handed over to myself as the father and other men to then learn how to herd the cattle, how to hunt out, out there, etc. So we come from a history where black African men weren't the type of fathers that we see on TV today. And we are trying to move into the space where we're trying to get black men who today use cell phones, today speak English, today dress the way they do, want to make money to say, look, if you're going to um, inherit, adopt a lot of these Western European concepts of living, then you may as well adopt this European way of being a father. And we're struggling now because of our historic colonization apartheid where black men were taken out of the household to go work in the mines, to go and work in, on the farms, in the factories. And our families were broken. And we're still dealing with the consequences of that trauma. And no one has actually sat. No one. No one. It can be a king, can be a president, maybe even pastors. Some of them try. No one has sat black men in particular and explained to them, this is where we are. This is what an empowered woman looks like. This is what marriage looks like in the 21st century outside of an African way. And this is what is expected of you as a father. Then you've got a situation where we have fathers and our fathers are not around for various reasons. This guy in my father's got 17 children, many different women. He spent probably the most time with us than with the other kids. But we also were living with my mom and we'd see him here and there. So now we've also inherited this habit of we don't have a present father. Some of us think it's normal because all your friends didn't have a present father. Some of us feel it's abnormal because all our black, white, other friends, their dads were always at sports games. Like, where's your dad? So we're dealing with the struggle now of trying to identify fatherhood in the modern for everyone, but in particular for the black man who comes from an African history where fatherhood looked different. Um, and I think for me, that's that's the conversation that I, I think we need to have as a society. Yeah, man, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think one of the comments was by Supreme Clients or something where he speaks about that incongruence between you and what society, inner yeah. you, outer you. So again, we dealing with who we are as a bunch of nyama, like that blackness, yeah. while having to conform to Western uh, 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 norms or rules, yeah. you know. And as you're saying, we've been conditioned because whether you're growing up watching Popeye, the Flintstones, you know, you're seeing how a family unit look, needs to look like. Yeah. Whether you are watching My Wife and Kids, whether you're watching, whether you're watching Blackish, Modern Family, Cosby The show. Simpsons, The Cosby Show, yeah. y the, it goes on and on and on. It's it's the conditioning of uh, The Simpsons. You've got Homer, comedic relief, dumb. Oh, look at me, mm. but he's out there working, and ooh, ooh, what's her name? Marge. Marge. Marge Simpson is the one who's running the household. Mm -hmm. She's making the decisions. Modern Family. The one, the, the dad goes, he's the one that sells property. Oh, full Dunphy. Yeah, full Dunphy, yeah. And the wife is chilling. In the no, 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 I'm fixing your table. I've got a oh. thing, man. It's mild OCD. Oh, I'm going to You know, say, same thing with the family guy, Peter Griffin. He's out there making money. Comes back, the wife dominates. My wife and kids. Things Michael, Michael Kyle. Jay is and here Jay. dominating. So if you grew up watching that from yeah. the Flintst Flintstones where Fred is out there, it's, it's, it builds something. It conditions yeah. you. So, I mean, I'm not shocked with my when our sisters are saying they want to be a stay-at-home girlfriend. They want to be a stay-at-home ban ban. You know? And that's you all they've to, been seeing on TV. That's all they've been seeing from a very, very young age. Yeah. You know? And it's been conditioning them. And Nati, as guys growing up seeing that, that's what we said. Okay, that's what fatherhood should look like. And I want to provide. And I have to But provide. we live in a society where men don't have jobs. Nothing. Andre Johnson is an advertising exec. Michael Kyle owns his own trucking courier company. Mm. Bill Cosby had money. Doctor. Um, he was a doctor in the show, I think. He was a doctor. Mm. All, the, all the guys that you speak about Peter in these, Griffin in these situations. The Homer works for the nuclear plant. 
everybody's got a job. Everyone's got a job and can provide, and they've got a home for their family. They're, they're, We're struggling they're, with they're, just they're that. Their job in, enables them not just to look after themselves, but to be able to have their wives stay at home. Yeah. Yeah, understand. Yeah. Yeah. So their jobs uh, allow that. Tina, we don't have that yeah. at all. So for them, fatherhood is very different from us because now, to now there's this Western thing of 50 50 and Lini, sure. yet there's certain slight expectations. So when you look at fatherhood, because of this whole 50 50 element, I feel, and I've spoken about this many, many times, it would see the men then end up having to adopt that deputy mom role. You know? So when you do watch these shows, you mm. watch U- 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 Michael and my wife and kids become a deputy mom. Making watch, pancakes for the kids for breakfast. Making pancakes, all those type of things. You watch Phil Dunphy. You watch these guys going and they they get dominated at home by their wives. Mm. You know, Therefore, much in relationships get dominated. The, the girlfriend or the baby mama or the wife tells them, you're going to parent like this, this, and this, and this. Mm. You're going to be at that rugby game. You're going to be at this birthday party. You're going to be at this, this. You're going to drink this. You're going to speak to that guy. And it, and it creates that incongruency or that dissonance of us as men mm. because we end up being a reflection of a mother. So so wh- you're saying women define fatherhood today and they define it based on what the media has trained them to believe not, fatherhood not, is. Not, not just women that have defined it. Nat, we also play a role in that. Of which we're struggling to meet it because yeah. we don't have the money. We, we, don't, we don't have the money or the ability. That, that, that's another thing. We can have the money. We don't have the ability to parent the way that they want us to parent, mm. you know, because what they don't speak about in these shows, because if you look at who oh, Michael and my wife and kids, he's always at home. Generally, he's always even at home. Andre Johnson is he's somehow they, always they, at home. They always at home. Yeah. Anyone who always can, around, whether you male or female, if you run a business, tell me if you're always at home, you know, tell me about the stress levels, the anxiety. Michael's there. He's a com- comedic relief. He's laughing. He's making jokes. If you're running a business, mm. chances are you highly stressed. Chances are there's a bit of anxiety, payroll, you know, uh, taxes. There's all of that, yeah. you know. So the people that I know that are new in business or been in business don't have the Michael energy, yeah. you know. And I watch this and I go, nah, man. They're this, selling a false narrative. They're selling a false narrative, mm. you know, because they're always happy. And whenever they have a problem, it lasts for 15 minutes of the episode. And then by the end of the episode, they've sorted it out. Yeah. And always. Lapo, Nina, in reality, these problems might last weeks, months. 15 years. 15 years. Of a miserable marriage. You know, and again, it's pointed out because in her mind, you should have parented like this. You should have fathered like this. Yeah. Because she saw when um Michael took with Junior and they went and they, they learned how to ride a bike and it took 10 minutes of the episode. Mm. You know full well what in reality it takes. But again, the conditioning when it starts at a six-year-old's mind, five-year-old, four-year-old, it, it, it has to brainwash and fuck us up in, in a way. It has to. What is the difference between how your father fathered you versus how you're fathering your boys? It's very different. I don't think, and this is a concept that I believe in, I believe in the present dad. The problem when you say present... Is that based on media and how you've been conditioned? So when I say present, people look at present in the way of the mother. Because the mother is always there. Mm. So guys, being a present mother and being a present dad is not the same to me. Being a present mother might look like a mom who's always there making breakfast for their kids, spending time. Me being a present dad is someone who tends the garden. Tending the garden is not something that you need to do every single day. Yeah, one. Mm. It might initially, when the child is young, mm. you know, tend the garden in a certain way, however you choose. But as the garden gets strong, mm. yeah, one, it starts becoming tending the garden once a week, once a month, you know, whatever you've decided to plant. Does a present here father here. sleep at home every night? Does that? Present father, in your opinion, sleep at home every night? He can. Okay. He can. Um, he no, can I, I want you to contrast the way your father fathered you so, versus so, how you so, fathered your so boys. I don't you started think with I, the present father. I don't think he tended the garden. So when I try and look at who I am as a man, mm. you know, I don't think I turned out, if someone had asked him when I was born, how do you want this guy to turn out? Mm. And if I look at the man that I am today, in terms of his teachings, how much of that did he pour into who I am? Mm. And you learn, Uguti, it might be 1%. His teaching that is within me might be indirect. So the question is, what? how did you tell your Please garden? slow that down. You feel, as an example, yeah. that Umlochwa invested 1% in, in investing in you. Maybe even less, yeah. 1%. Yeah. And that you, you may have learned other things from him, but indirectly. Yeah. Not with him intentionally. Yeah. What, what percentage so might you assign there? Two. So okay. even even with that, 
No, I, I asked you to slow it down because it's important. Yeah. There are a lot of people who are influenced by their fathers, not because the fathers were trying to do something. Yeah. But it's because the kids themselves had to almost learn by dad's bad so, behaviors, good behaviors, etc. So so I, I think the nice thing is that what the learning was, the indirect was who I am and trying to, because there's also a biological thing as well, you know, mm. starting to realize, oh, okay, I've got this thing in my eye. He's got that thing in my eye. Okay, it's a family thing, type of thing. Surface eye, Tijerian. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Sindhis. So if you guys ever meet us, there's something like in our eyes, which we inherited. An yeah. optometrist told me it's not genetic. I don't agree with that optometrist. But we've got something called surface eye to Jerry. It's this, it's almost like a gland thing that grows over your eye. And my father and uh. his siblings generally have it. Uh. Uh. Carry on, alien. <laughs> so, <laughs> so again, me learning indirectly through him, I don't know if it's got, if I learned more indirectly through his learnings versus other men mm. that I had access to. Yeah, one. So, give me, I want to, tend to my garden a bit more i understand which as my garden grows older or gets older yeah they'll want to add different flowers different fruits different vegetables different whatever and that's fine you know but i want to create a fertile uh, environment where they can do that mm. where they're not limited because again once kids get to a certain level they must go you know once they get to a certain age they must go i'm not there trying to instill certain things and force them to only i'm missing a 12 just don't die alone you mm. must start making certain decisions but right now i want to be able to tend to my to my garden in terms of religion. You know, I saw the one time we were chowing and I saw Untanzi praying, you know, and I waited for him to finish. And then afterwards I asked him, Untanga, what's happening? Mm. One, and we had a conversation because so, clearly someone is tending into his religious garden sure. that I'm not. That one. And if I let that go, you know, it might go left, it might go right, it might go whatever. Mm. And I might be stuck on the outside without understanding his journey. Sure. Um, right now at schools, they're learning about the LGBT community. Mm. That might be something I'm pro or against or whatever the situation. But I want to tend to that garden. Mm. I don't want a situation where I'm reactive as a parent. I don't want to need to know every aspect about everything, mm. you know. But I want to know, Guti, okay, Shab Ndanga, so you're saying you identify as a girl. Explain what's happening. Where are you hearing these things? Mm. What's, what's, who's planting these seeds in your life yeah yeah one so i just in terms of my presentness i just want to ensure good see there's certain seeds i'm planting in them am i there every day no mm. am i there every day tucking them in no yeah one i feel that's the other side of the coin that's the the, the softer part that's the mom role yeah one so give me ni a panzi get such ends pagati we are soft niche do you not feel that uh, how you're fathering is number one a trauma reaction I want to fill in the spaces I feel my father didn't. Therefore, I will do what he couldn't or didn't do. And then number two, do you not think you are fathering the way that you learned from your single mother and from society, whether you are aware of it or not, that look, okay. maybe I'm parenting, you could call it tending to a garden, but I'm actually kind of doing the things that my mom did because that's, okay. that's the only present, present influence I saw directly every day. So in terms of trauma, and trying to parent like umams, I think I was definitely that guy. So from the beginning, with the number one, with the zeta, you know. So from when I first had the child for like four years, mm. I was 100% trauma response parenting like umamsi, where I'm there. I was deputy mom. I was. You are you trying know, to be the best mother to your children. Uh, that possible. That has a penis. Yeah, one. Let's let's do reading, boys. Let's go and get yeah, one. All those mommy things. with the penis. Yeah, mommy with the penis. Long. Dad, my knees sore. Go ask your mom. No, no, no you make it better. It better. Kiss it. Yeah, you give me a softer. Yeah, one. Yeah, one. So I was definitely that. Now it's I've I've passed that. I'm no longer there. So it's no longer a trauma response. It's no longer a um being a deputy mom. No longer trying to. It is me saying, if I were to parent myself, mm. if I was a father to me, you know. Because the world will do the majority of the parenting. The world will definitely do the majority of the parenting. Where now, what are the gaps that you think you should come in? By the world doing the majority of the parenting, you mean your child spends more time yeah. in the world so, so than with my, their parents? My, my own dad spends 45 hours with his teacher a week. You know, that's mm. contact time. How many hours does he spend with me? He'd be lucky to get five. On the best week. Of eight like times that. seven is eight. Eight is 64 is 56, I think. 56 okay. hours sleeping. Sorry. 56 hours sleeping, yeah. 45 hours with their teacher. Yeah, one. So he'll be lucky to get five. Putin five is a blessing. He'll be lucky to get 
three hour, two hours of contact time. A day? No, a week. A week? Because if you look at it, ne? so I'll give you an example. I'll come back from, let's say, Spans, Spans, and then I'll go to like, on a Tuesday, I'll go to Reiki. So on Tuesday, I'll only see them in the morning for drop-off. You don't see them in the evening? I don't see them Because you have rugby either. practice. That one. So it'll be that 30-minute drive. Yeah. That's Tuesday, that's Thursday. I probably won't see them on a Friday. I didn't see them yesterday. Mm. I'm going to see them today. So that means we go to this past week. I saw them for about 30 minutes on a Monday, mm. 30 minutes on a Tuesday, probably an hour on the Wednesday, Thursday, and then I haven't seen them. This this is seeing them, not necessarily contact, contact, like you're speaking, teaching, asking yeah, them how they're doing. seeing them. Just being in the this, same this space. This is seeing them. Yeah. Not good today. They, this is just me. Okay. Now I can see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. But so they've had just three hours of me seeing them. What influenced your change from being a deputy mom to where you are now, number one? Mm. And then number two, do you not think on a long enough time scale, based on the influence, you will move from being deputy mom to what you are now to maybe even being fully absent because people like Akon, people like Andrew Tate are like a child, a father's not supposed to be around all the time. Once in a while is good enough. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it what, what influenced you first and foremost to change? So, what influenced me was the fact that I was I was understanding in life there's plus, there's minus, there's light, there's dark, there's good, there's bad. We spoke about this with Koyum. Ne? Uguti, there is the angel, there's the demon. In all of us, we need to feed both sides, you know, and so that you can make these complete human beings. Mm. And a mother's energy should not be the same as a father's energy. Where does that come from? Because you were deputy mom. Is it because of your experience? Yes, it's because of... Where you're like, I, I'm not enjoying this. I'm not liking this. You, this doesn't you, you, seem you, great. You remember like when you hit like grade 10 and you go puberty? Because you are this perfect child. Mm. You're always this perfect child. I know with us, we were these perfect child uh, uh, to mom. See, we listen to everything at school. We were these perfect kids. But once you hit post-puberty, there's something that happens. That first tingle of testosterone. Mm. All of a sudden, you realize which you're a different animal to your mother. Okay. You're a different animal to your sister. Huh. Yeah, one. The way that you view a female and the way the female views you. Yeah. You realize, Guti, we look the same, but we opposites. So this was an internal thing. This was an internal thing. This is why I'm asking that over time, with this tingle you're speaking about, do yeah. you not think you'll get to a point of anoth- another type of testosterone M- maybe. at age 40, where you're like, actually, what the fuck was I thinking? So this present father tend to the garden bullshit. No, I must see my look, kid once every there, six months. It's, it's, it's maybe. And I don't know. 50 mm. Cent said something. So he was getting interviewed and they said, 50, you lost your grandmother, you lost your mother, you know, you have no present father, you have, you have one. So you had to kind of fend for yourself from when you were like 12 or whatever. How much further would you have been if you had a present father and a present mother and you grew up yeah. like um, that American family? Yeah. And 50 said, Uguti, um, maybe there'd be no 50 Cent maybe I'd have to experience, I had to experience all that pain at a young age to unearth or 50, yeah. you know. Maybe if I had a present mom, present dad, I would have gotten a corporate job working at a desk, yeah. typing. Yeah, but maybe. And there's the other maybe. Yeah. Like Steph Curry, who had a present mom and had a present dad. Yeah. Like Michael Jordan, who had a present mom and present dad. Yeah. And they became great. Yeah. Yeah, so I might become that guy who decides to take a huge step back. But as it is now, I'm saying... They've got a mother who's adding all what you consider light. Yeah. I had to go through my own darknesses of life, and they'll go through their own darknesses mm. to balance myself out of the dark. Do you have to be dark as a father? I think you have to be the opposite of the mother. So if the mom is dark, so if the you if must be light. You must be light. Feminine. We'll so call it feminine. Yes, let's call it feminine. And I think those relationships work because we've seen a lot of strong... Complementary dynamics. We, we've seen a lot of strong women with a lot of talala men. And you're like, how do they... That relationship works. It balances. It balances. And if, if both of you are light, do you have to outsource I, the I, dark? I think, Kuti, if you don't outsource it, there's going to be a problem. Mm. That's why even if you look at gay relationships, mm. you know, you always have like the butch lesbian. The more masculine butch partner lesbian. and the and more And then you feminine. have the nice feminist... Uh, well, not Kuti, I was not nice. But like, even with gays, you'll find that there's a top and there's a bottom. Mm. That one, that's how they label themselves. Yeah. Most. That one. So again, it's that balance of energy. And I think it has to be some sort in the house. And if it's not there, you have to outsource. Yeah. We outsourced it through the rugby coaches that we had. Mm. We outsourced it 
I guess in 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 the music that we listen to, the, the rugby coaches the were very important for us, yeah, and being in that Afrikaans, so aggressive masculine the, space. The, the young guys are now consuming Andrew T- Tate, uh, R.I.P. Kevin Samuels. They're consuming that other side yeah. that they've never been exposed to to try and balance the so-called thing. toxic masculinity. So-called toxic. So a lot of people aren't asking why is there such a huge boom of toxic masculinity. Yeah. It's the same reason why there was such a huge boom of feminism because they just needed a balance of the scale. Yeah, but Wuti, once it starts tipping too much on this one side, mm. so, something is going to give. It needs to balance. Mm. It has to balance. You know, so give me that's how I'm seeing it. So maybe in the future, once I feel Wuti, the boys, as I said, Wuti, as they get older, I'll take more and more of a step back because I feel Wuti, life will start doing its job and start yeah. adding that darkness. And it will. And it will. You know, they get dumped by a girl. They'll not make a team, whatever sure. the case is. And I will no longer be needed as much to teach those lessons because they will learn them. Mm. But right now, because right now, my job is to make sure Guti as Uzi Nutella, Takao. the chocolate spread. Hey. Did you say Nutella? Yeah, in land. Where do you come from, bro? Angaz English. Do you guys learn English where you come from? Angaz Nutella. 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 Chocolate spread. You go with chocolate spread guys. next time so you don't embarrass our family. Jeez. Ah, that's tired. Let, let, let me come in. So we, no, we, let, we, let, we, let, let me finish. Oh. Just a little. But it's it's for me to when he comes home excited. Someone said pen. Let pen speak. Eh, eh, eh. pen. And I was saying, with you, you have to create a little darkness where he comes home excited that's going to have the chocolate spread, but I just feel he's going to hide the bread. That's horrible. Yeah. That's unnecessary. Yeah. Because he comes home, he's too excited. No, it's just bad. He has too much up. Just too... Oh, that's down. nasty, though. It is what it is. I got my noodles. They never crack. So my experience... <laughs> um, and look, I think we're going to have to have these conversations a lot. Because, mm. like I said, fatherhood is big for me and romantic relationships as well. And I've mm. probably got 10 hours of content. Like, if I was to switch on a camera and speak by myself, mm. I could p- probably speak about fatherhood for 10 hours nonstop. Yeah. Um, I can only speak in retrospect now, mm. you know, because at age 15 or so, I hated your father. Mm. Uh, and if it was legal, I would have made means to, to take him out of this life. Right. I would have ended his life. Uh, but I was a little punk. I was scared. I was scared of jail. Mm. Uh, I don't know how I was going to do it. Uh, I've gone through the motions. And I ended up spending quite a bit of time with him before he passed. Mm. And when he passed, we were there and we buried him. Mm. And I had the greatest peace. Mm. In retrospect now, not then, I can say that maybe from a direct perspective, I probably got about 20% mm. of who I am today. Umam has done the heaviest of lifting. But in retrospect, I think 20% was from your father in the little times we spent with him. It's like going mm. to a Rick Ross concert and it changes your life. One concert. Mm. So the times that I got to see him and spend time with him, it was so impactful that I'd probably give it 20%. Mm. And then the indirect um, in life, I'd probably give it 30, which means it balances with your mom's 50 mm. to make up who I am. The indirect, that includes mm. his genes, uh, that includes spending time with his family, mm. you know, mm. uh, our cousins on that mm. side, or Sazi, mm, mm. as an example, et etc. Mm. Um, watching him parent other children, his soccer boys, the guys he goes hunting with, etc., um, to make up who I am. Mm. In terms of who's made the most contribution in my life uh, from an investment perspective, your mom probably sits at a sizzling 90%, mm. 95%. So he gets a, maybe a five. The times I sneer, I can see in Kwatis Fagi Rama, see Kok, Ube, Paul, as Tingy Coke, you know. Apple teas, you remember? Apple Tizer and nice sandwiches from a select, a mm. shell. Um, so Umam, see, from an investment is 1995. It's, it's, it's amazing what the um, mothers out there can do shit for their kids for years and years and years every single day breakfast yeah. lunch dinner breakfast lunch dinner for years and a fucking cunt of a dad can do something one time yeah and it's such a, a huge effect i can explain that like a kate can ask a question like that yeah. like why yeah. as a mom do i do so much and then later on yeah 
my child credits their father. No, no. I, and, uh, and I, 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 I get it. No, I'm going to make a video about yeah. it on my own I, where I, I, I explain it. because it goes back to the suppression argument. Mm. So you've got radical feminists and they are suppressing masculinity. Not mm. even toxic, just mas masculinity. And you need a toxic male to come up. Mm. You've got Gotham City with these corrupt politicians. Mm. And it, you can't just be a good guy. You have mm. to be Batman. Mm. And you have to be a billionaire. And you have to enact violence on these people. Mm. So mm. it becomes a similar thing where a woman will indirectly shame out of the goodness of her heart. <laughs> suppress so much of the dad that when the dad comes, that little thing he does is so impactful. Mm. You know, you could same thing could happen with a woman. Uh, with the mother. A child is, is starved of their mother so much. They see all these women. I wish that was my mom. She's so amazing. And the day they meet their mom, she could be a drug addict. She could be... They just want to see what this woman looks like. Mm. They just want to hear her voice. They just want to hear experiences. And I believe in genetics so much mm. that you might find that the mom raises a son and the son's genetic code is so aligned to the father that when he meets his father, he's like, I've met myself. Mm. Why was I eating grass with these losers yeah. when I should be eating meat? Mm. Mm. You know when Po meets his dad in Kung Fu Panda? Yeah. Because his, comes... his adopted dad is like a deputy mom. Yeah. She's an every, he's, he's an a, everything. He's a, you know, um, he's a goose. He's a goose. He's a goose. You know what I mean? Yeah. Making noodles and yeah. tofu. Then he meets his, his dad, Li Shen, who's the panda, coming from the... And he's just like, this is Blown who I've always been. Blown away. And the goose is hurt. Yeah. But I did everything for you. So something like that happens. The other thing could be complimentary, which is weird. Mm. The mother raising the son could be exactly the same. So you raise a boy who has your genes and your everything. Mm. And do you know who you were attracted to? You were attracted yeah. to this fucking animal. Yeah. So when your boy meets this yeah. animal, he's like, why do I like this disastrous? I, I feel that. Because it's, it's, it's because I'm like yeah. you. and I'm So it could be that we are aligned. Or it could be, but it's, I'm it, attracted but, but to what I'm not. It's that whole turtle tortoise thing. Guti, let's say moms are tortoises. And they're going around the land and they're eating. A tortoise is on land, yeah. a turtle is in the water. And, and you know, now are you a turtle. You don't know you're a turtle. You look like a tortoise, right? You look like a tortoise. So you're walking around and Ole is making you eat grass and you're also eating grass. And, and the sun is hot. And the sun is you're hot and you're, sun chilling burnt. And, you're, you're, and you're chilling there. Al Alpino, you know, and, that, know they walk. and you're doing that for like 10 years. Why and do then, I always need extra sunscreen? You know, and then one day out of nowhere, your toxic dad comes through out the water and goes, let's go for a young swim. And you're like, no, I can't do that. You're like, like it's like, just come yeah, for just a little, little bit. Just hold your little, just little flipper. Just, and then turn us in there. Like, and he yeah. was like, hey, what, what is happening here? What? And the old lady, obviously, as a tortoise, is chilling outside, hating, mad. Because she can't go in. Hey, shout out to the little ma mermaid and, and you know, uh, Hallie, Hallie Bailey, mm. who's the new face of the little mermaid, who oh, just wow. come out recently. But it becomes that, and then that one day of you swimming in the sea, in the ocean, mm. you know, with your toxic dad, and you're now eating seaweed, and you're seeing sharks, and you're seeing, because that's what happens. Cause Ubaba and you're not scared of them. Because Ubaba took us into... Dangerous places, and you, you know, felt at home. And you, yeah, go oh. crane. You, you're not like he's overwhelmed. He's a killer, and he's <laughs> corrupt. Why do I feel at home? Give me a hug, <laughs> uncle. It's the weirdest so, thing when we meet so, toxic people. When yeah. I meet toxic people, I'm so oh. comfortable. Bring it in. Bring Inka it in. Be the in. corrupt entrepreneurs. Love me, love me. Horrible politicians. Yeah, the worst. That's why sometimes also when I'm with like racist Afrikaans, white. Oh. I'm so comfortable. Come I'm here. like, ah, oh, this you. is such a safe space. You are me. I am you. And then that day when you get out of the water and then you go back to chilling with your mom yeah. and now you're back there having sunscreen and eating grass, you forever, like, oof. When I, yeah, they can come back again. If it's, once every 10 years, it's fine. But anyway, those are the things that shaped me as fatherhood. Sorry. No, thank you. So so that's been the impact of, of Umlocha on me. And initially, I also had the trauma reaction of, yeah. I will be everything my father wasn't because yeah. my father did not articulate, our father did not articulate to me the type of man, lover, father he was. Yeah. We had to decode. Yeah. And obviously, we'll write a report. What do you see there? Oh, so Ramaphosa is the best president. Mm. I think he's doing his best. The ANC is just making it difficult for him, but his heart is in the right place. The next person writes the same report. I think Cyril's the worst president ever. Guy mm. only cares about money. Him and his funders are destroying South Africa. They want to privatize everything. 
same same story, different uh, um, perception and, and mm, outcomes. Mm. So, if your father had articulated, according to my opinion, and mm. I only say this because I'm biased, because mm. I'm his son, mm. and because I think I'm fucking amazing. Mm. And what I do is I try to explain and defend horrible behavior because it is me. Mm. The reason my father beat my mom mm. was because my mom was frustrating him verbally mm. and he wasn't good at defending himself verbally mm. and because he's a man and men sometimes behave like children, mm. he decided to lash out physically. Mm. He was like a child throwing a tantrum. Mm. This is me trying to defend him because he is my father and I'm like, I could be him. You're trying to understand it as well. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to... Like, why yeah. are black people so dirty and oh, why do they to, destroy... You're not allowed to ask those questions. You you're not allowed people... to ask. Yeah. Ah, fuck that. Um, why do black people burn libraries mm. and buses and these are their things? And I'm like, okay, let's assume black people are not retards and let's mm. assume that these guys have written email after email, sent facts after facts, tried to ask the president when he visits and no one has ever listened. Mm. And they've been told so many times by other communities, the only time these guys came was when we burned something. Mm. The only time mainstream media came with the cameras mm. is when we burned something. Because mm. when we even wrote to the media, mm. oh, that blue tick us. So sorry to hear that. But if you guys burn this thing, yes, it's yours. Yes, mm. it needs to be replaced. Mm. They will listen. It's like, why Why does the government need you to burn things down for them to... Why must you kidnap the minister of it's, water it's, for it's, them to it's, fix it's, the it's, water it's at Amans Kral? It's the same in relationships. And uh, this is a very touchy topic. And I'm really apologizing, trigger alert. Because people will say he doesn't speak in the relationship but men speak all the time and a lot of the fights it has to get to a point where we need to get overly aggressive god forbid it gets physical because i'm saying these things but you're not hearing me but you're not hearing me i don't like it when this happens i don't like it. i'm saying it for time and time I'm not justifying why people are abusing or hurting or fighting or that's i'm not i'm doing not justifying not defending say, just explaining just why it happens. Say, just trying to understand why because this guy has said this shit over and over and over and over and when you're not listening or you don't care or you whatever the case is to a point where he explodes he's like you know what this is we should win you only listen like this you know mm. and then he takes matters a he bit either extreme. gets very ex ex expressive yeah verbally physically yeah or as T.D. Jakes calls it, he becomes a caveman. Oh, yeah. Ooh, where he draws yeah. back, goes into a yeah. cave. He's taken his life. Yeah. Oh, why? Why? Because every time he tried to come out and say something, you'd hurt him. So then, so then he calls so back. A lot of absent fathers today, Yeah. again, understanding. We'll speak about your father because mm. we've got two minutes. I watched your father father other children. Wait. To, I, what, to what Kate is asking. I watched his, your soccer, father, his soccer boys, other boys in the neighborhood. Dogs. The reason was because... Dogs. The reason was because... I'm speaking about children. I understand yeah. the dogs. He took good care of the dogs. He, he took take them to he, the vet. He, he, he cooked feed them, dogs. Give them medicine. He, he looked He looked after dogs. Dogs. Dags. What dags. You like dags? Like dags. He looked oh, after dogs. dogs. Better than he looked after human beings. So the dogs is one part. The other part is Kids. other people's children. And it yeah. was because those parents, whether it was intentional or not, they were sending... Yeah. The access, children to my access, father. Access. And he was fathering mm. them. Because he was a And I realized yeah. that one mm. of the issues was the mothers of my father's children are not sending Got you. the children to. So yeah. a lot of absent fathers are absent because they tried courts, lashing out, speaking on social media, and then you get dragged by Twitter trolls. Mm. Yeah, we wonder what you did. And it hurts mm. yeah. the ordinary man. You speak out to other men, I don't mm. want to let it go. You speak out to women, yeah, men like you, it's because of privilege, mm. cavemen. Mm. So the guy's like, Dude, I know what it's I. The grand. Same grand, and he chucks. Mm. And one day, the child comes to him, and he's so detached. In his head, my child died when Years they were ago. seven. Years ago. I don't know who you are, mm. but I remember my child died, and I remember having to heal for five, six, seven years that my child is dead. Mm. So I don't know who you are and I'm not interested because I was hurt when my child died. Mm. But my child didn't die literally. My child died because the mother kept the child away from me mm. so long mm. that I was forced to heal and deal with this pain of not having a child. How, so how, some how guys are absent because they run away. See. Now let's let's shut it down. You've got see two ya. minutes. See you later, man. Sorry, see how much time? Ten. Okay, we can shut it okay. down in five. Um, don't shy, man. No, but like how, how, long, how, your, your, your how long can, you, how long can you knock on the door 
until you give up and so it becomes a moment where the absent father either burns the building yeah hurts the mom yeah maybe takes the mom's life and the child sure which is the burning of the building because no one is hearing me sure why did he kill his wife and his children because maybe no one was not listening yeah or he becomes a caveman and he runs away yeah oh he's a dead beat why did you leave your kids and this guy is fathering children in the streets yeah. he's a soccer coach somewhere he's a school teacher somewhere sure his stepchildren love him and you're mm. like how do his stepkids love him but he's biological you need to investigate yeah and these become the conversations and Jobang Yesho they they deeper than we have time for but we're going to have to do these maybe we must do a, a, a male mental health yeah. sit down with a group hopefully filmed mm. and then we must do a fatherhood one but i want us to yeah. have some of these because for me and you this becomes a form of therapy for me and you yeah individuals together mm. hopefully for your sister Penrose she's got her own perception of yeah. our father yeah and for your mother who supports all of our yeah. content to also sure. watch and learn and also figure out the animals we're becoming because mm. every smart woman i've met every smart mo- woman i've met has studied men her brothers her father other men that she's around sure and she's seen them grow from lion cub all the way to becoming this animal this dangerous dangerous animal and they know how to move and it's, it it hit me when i didn't understand why oh mama that used to send us around started speaking to me differently they were almost speaking with a a reserved tone when i came back from tertiary mm. when i started working when i started having my own kids i put it we have funny tea yeah mama it's me ngaba yo skandeli tea me na ngitu yang tum cuz you're involving into a different monster she realizes that if i don't manage this animal yeah it'll burn everything and and a lot of women i realize mothers because they also are hurt they also have their own pains sure. which they also need to, sure. to to get out a lot of women don't realize that you're dealing with a different animal mm. you have been going with this guy back and forth to court he's been begging for his child he's been he cried mm. do you remember when he cried ah oh, such a gay thing why was he even crying for his child he was being traumatic i'm like the day he cried was the day he broke and now we all have to mm. hold our breath that this guy might at any given time pop out of anywhere in your life Overnight. and destroy you. Yeah. And then everyone is going to pretend to be sad and I'm going to look at your family lady and be like mm. you guys knew this guy wasn't like and he wanted his child. You're going to look at the girl and her friends that were bashing this guy and dragging him on Twitter. Ah, I know this penal guy and he's been hurting my friend. You guys watched. Your friend now is being buried and you guys are not going to take accountability. That this guy was trying to be like guys, you're corrupt. Guys, load shedding. Guys, potholes. Next thing you hear Chris Hani's situation is happening with our current politicians and now we're shocked. How Kanjani 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 they would kind of What was happening all these years all these years when people have been complaining about your corruption and your bullshit and your what do you think was going to happen? Hmm. Your birthing your own super villain. This happens in the Incredibles. Yeah. Where Mr. Incredible ignores this little boy. This boy feels hurt and later on reemerges as a super villain. You are creating super villains who are going to become worse terrorists than you guys were during the apartheid era. And they're not going to sit down and oh let's call Kodesa and negotiate. No, okay, let's sit down chief and find a, a, a middle ground. These kids will go back all the way to Solomon Mahlangu, go all the way back to history and they will be like watch what we're going to do to you. Hmm. Watch what we're going to do to you. And 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 it's going to be glorious. So this happens in relationships yeah on a micro scale mm. and everyone is screaming and the men are screaming and the men are following Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson and they bashing women on Twitter which is a cry for help mm. and women and whoever is influencing them are not listening guys Yo. these men are saying something no fuck them and what and and, 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 and and then when things are like using to listen what we call GBV happen we all shocked oh, why Kanjani Kanjani why did he chop her <laughs> he must be a psychopath then why am i psychopath on the rise how do shai mo fizzle and you can close us off no man so yeah this as you said this is a topic that you can speak about for hours and hours and days and days you know especially with fatherhood because we can segment it there's there's fathers that live with their kids you know and even though they live with their kids they're not present there's different types of there's fathers there's different there's different types of fathers who live with their kids and are in the same house the quote is the quote is uh the quote goes something like sometimes even married women are single mothers yeah because Ooh. the guy is there yeah mumzimba yeah but not in substance spirit whatever yeah, so we can break it down and you can speak for hours where you love with your kids 
that one. You're doing nothing. But like, I you, have you, greater you, impact you. visiting my kids once a month than the guy. Then you do living every day. Every day, you know. And then there's guys who live with their kids, and then, in my opinion, are deputy moms, mm-hmm. you know. And then there's guys who are trying a different model of parenting. And then again, then there's guys who are co-parenting, you know, who they've moved on in relationships. They can co-parent in a toxic manner because they they are hurt as or they can co-parent in a great way because they're still friends we can segment fatherhood like that you know and then we can segment the absent father mm. of which the absent father now it is absent father in the sense of the mom ran away with the kids sure. so it's and the then, mother's fault and or then, and then there's absent his father fault. it's his fault so yeah. we can speak about all these topics and each little sub each topic has a, a subtopic yeah. whatever the case is and we can speak for hours and hours you know um but i need it, to say this while you speak about fathers there are sure. some fathers that are killing the game that when it comes to the TV version of a father, they yeah. get 100%. Yeah. Um, I was a perfect student. Yeah. Academics, sports, culture. The danger yeah. is when I become the benchmark for all the kids. Yeah. When the average child is, doesn't have whatever advantage I have. Yeah. But look at Mr. Whoever. Look at Patrice. Mm. Do you even understand how Patrice made his money? Mm. We, we need to be sensitive. There are guys that are killing it. Yeah. And even those guys, when they are killing it, those guys must be very careful. To not just go and bash other men, but I'm doing it. Look there's, at me. There's, there's a guy on Instagram that was following me and commenting some of and I unfollowed him. Like, because I realized when I was going through the Suguti, I was the perfect Instagram dad. Mm. You know, so whoever goes to my Instagram says, oh, you're such an amazing dad. You know, you don't know shit about me. But the way that this guy was like, yeah, this is what, and I, and I realized, with, mm, mm, mm. if if Njalo, you post and it's just 99% women that are clapping hands, and this guy who, when I watch his content, I don't agree with it. Mm. You know, because it's all about giving women money and making sure what's the I was like, ugh, sis. You know, so give me. I was like, okay, I'm realizing what I'm selling to the world. Mm. I'm selling this version. You need to introspect about, you know, how you're influencing other guys so, as well, so which I, might, so, which so might be to, misleading. I, I had to change. Mm. I had to change and realize, even with my content, like I'm starting to realize with you, who is consuming it mm. and who's the type of person that's consuming it. Mm. You know, are these angry young black men? Hmm. Or is it guys who are, oh my God, you know, Steve Harvey type of man. So I'm trying to, anyway, going back to just... It's, it's, very, it's very important in the content that we send out on social media that we do a, a check and a test of what is the influence of your content. Yeah. And if it is not influencing people in the way that you think is best, you need yeah. to change it. Because you just think you're representing fathers. Yeah. Can't dec- Men and women are using you as the poster of this guy's perfect, be like him. And you're like, guys, whoa, whoa, whoa. I shoot videos whoa. with my kids once a month whoa, for the whole day when I see them. And then I stagger how I release it. So it looks like I'm with them all the Every time. Day. I'm not. No, no. So no, I need no. to speak for all about guys. Yes, be with your kids. Yes, post yeah. content. But then also explain mm. I don't see my kids. I'm struggling with money. I shoot content. Uh, Drake speaks about it in Emotionless. Mm. These girls that travel uh, and then take a lot of content. And then keep sharing it over time as if they're still traveling. Yeah, and yeah, You're like, yeah, no, yeah. it was just one trip. Yeah. So we need to be very... Because we become the propaganda that we don't sure, like in the media. Sure. Of sending out a narrative that is false. Um, very, very important. You know. So yeah, man. I, 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 I wish we could do something where we do like an open chat with people and have a forum where we can speak. Um, and engage. they must pay. You guys must pay. Big Not model. because we like money, but because we need to sustain this thing. Yeah. So again, guys... My whole view on it is who's tending to your kid's garden, you know. So me, where I'm at now, I'm trying to balance out what they're getting from school, from media, from their mother. I'm trying to be the opposite of that just so they can get a better understanding. As they get older, I'll take a step back, you know. Um, Go with me on my journey. Figure out if I'm doing something that in resonates. 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 I heard you say resonates. I'm like, what, what English why is this? One time? We've got one minute. You Please know, shut it down. Um, Cause you talk forever, bro. Listen, um, but again, maybe I can teach you something. You can teach me something, and we can grow together. Pen and pen, guys. We're out. Looking forward to some of your comments. Uh, looking forward to catching up with you guys again soon. And shout out again to Dumi, and we'll see you at M Studios in Newtown. We love you guys. We're out. Shut up, guys. <laughs>